it's all kicked off. So I was like not planning on doing it this well, making this this early because I was like, I need a break. My brain, do you know what I mean? But then she releases this Entertainment Weekly cover from nowhere. So there's a lot to get into here. Okay, so the cover of this magazine, instantly noticeable. All these badges on the already gay jean jackets. Double denim combo. So <laughs> the first one I see, because normal, is the fucking pride pin. Love heart rainbow thing here. And Taylor liked two posts on Tumblr, one confirming that yes, indeed, it is a pride pin, as if we didn't know. So that basically, people that were just trying to be like, oh no, it's just the aesthetic of the new album, the rainbows. No, no it's not. She told me. She told us. So then, obviously, if you look closer, there's more. There's more. So you've got the Drake pin. As we spoke about Drake's party, the golden tattoos. That's what I thought instantly, but obviously it could mean other things because this whole thing was about looking at Easter eggs that she's been talking about, wanting us to dig deeper. And she's really embraced that a lot, this era. Like Obviously it's always been a thing, but she's really talking about it this era, you know. So she she's wanting people to look. She's like, look, look. <laughs> For anyone that's looking, it's becoming obvious, so... You know, <clears throat> then there's a choice of arm pin, a gay man. Obviously, she performed with him um, on the rep tour, and obviously, she's saying that this stuff is like a hint foreshadowing for the album. So, whatever that means, whether Troy's gonna be on the album, who knows? In like the actual interview article thing, um, it refers to when Taylor like stood up for Hayley Kyoko. Um, there was like a thing, I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I'll try and find it. And Taylor was it basically I think Haley said something and like a lot of Swifties took it out of context and then Taylor was like look no and then it went on to speak about how she bought uh, how she performed with her uh at both at the Reptor and then um at the LGBT fucking ch charity event thing where she performed delicate why would you bring that up why do you know what I mean like it's it's putting the things next to each other, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Do you know what I mean? It talks about things that, like, she likes and who she's inspired by. And um, one of the artists she mentions is King Princess. Lesbian. No lesbian. Like, very gay, openly gay, like, ex just gay. So, like, what? Do you know what I mean? And then um, Taylor talks about a book, which happens to be about... Uh, a bisexual woman and a lesbian who ex-girlfriends. Uh, Taylor also says, This time around I feel more comfortable being brave enough and uh, to be vulnerable. Because my fans are brave enough to be vulnerable with me, once people delve into the album and become pretty clear that that's more of the f fingerprint of this. It, that is much more of a singer-songwriter personal journey than the last one. She uses the term... Um, brave enough to be vulnerable in her pride speech uh, that she did during Pride Month on uh, the Rep Tour. Uh, Taylor also talks about being inspired by Game of Thrones uh, when writing um, Look What You Made Me Do and King of My Heart. So, and she's saying that she wrote it about um, about Khal Drogo and Daenerys. So she's basically removing uh, the idea that that song then songs are about Joe and obviously I don't believe her here like do you know what I mean I think she's saying that to sort of make people think hmm I thought that was about Joe so I think she doesn't mean that but she's taking away the label of the song about Joe that's my opinion and then so I think it's placing doubt into people that wouldn't normally think ah oh, maybe what I thought that do you know what I mean so um and then you could say oh well then that means it's not about Carly well she's not going to be like oh do you know, she's not going to say that. Uh, Taylor also talks about um, Killing Eve, which is very popular within, you know, the gay community, obviously, because uh, it, it's very homoerotic. Um, so it's basically like a known gay thing. Obviously, it's very popular, you know, everywhere, but look what she says about it. Pin here, the daisy again. 
This could look pessimistic and not good for Kayla, but I don't think it means that because I'm feeling confident and I believe in love. Also, I can't remember if, it, if I put it in the last video, because I know I recorded it, but then there was like an audio issue. So, uh, did I speak about uh, Carly going to the reputation tour in Nashville? I can't remember if I did, but I'm saying it now. She did. They took pictures. Uh, Abigail was there as well. She went with her sister. Uh, Carly was with her sister. So, it was like a big family affair. Um, and Taylor sung dressed to Carly and like pointed and she doesn't usually do that in the choreography if i've already said this sorry so in a recent interview i think it was the one with capital um taylor was talking and then she like corrects herself as you can see here uh so she changed it from saying a guy's perspective to a love interest perspective and just look at the outfit it speaks for itself so in the other videos, it's ba it was basically just been like a timeline sort of situation. So in this one, uh, it's going to be a bit more timeliney stuff because I'm going to be talking about uh, Taylor's bearding. But the first part where it's about Tom Hiddleston, it's just going to sort of be articles where, you know, the media was picking up that it wasn't real and stuff like that because it was so over the top that literally everyone knows it wasn't real. So I don't even have to explain it to you that much because it was just so obviously not real. Um, and then I'm going to talk about Calvin Harris and Taylor. That's going to be more of a timeline thing. Um, and then I'm going to get into explaining how um, Carly and Josh are n not real. Um, but I'm also going to speak a bit more about, you know, Easter eggs, so like tour visuals and stuff on the rep tour. And uh, just like little sort of, you know, pinpoints and theories that are quite popular. And maybe some aren't as popular, just things that I've sort of been missing. So once again, I'm getting uh, most uh, information from kaylarevidence.com. Uh, so these are just links to articles from around when Tom and Taylor were together. Um, so they were headlines. So things like Taylor Swift and Tom Hiddleston really want you to believe they're together. Um, so from Huffington Post, that was from, and this is from, Will Tom Hiddleston and Taylor Swift reject the Emmys red carpet to their totally organic love fest? <laughs> From the Daily Beast, I have no patience for Taylor Swift and Tom Hiddleston. Uh, Daily Mail, can we talk about the, those staged photos? Taylor Swift's secret tryst with Tom Hiddleston, labelled completely fake and awkward as the internet erupts with memes. Um, there's just like so many. Like I'll link the thing and you can read them yourself if you want, but there's so many. And obviously the whole um, uh, I love TS t-shirts, which Taylor... Um, mocked later on in the um, Look What You Made Me Do video. Also a popular theory is that um, the men wearing the I Love TS t-shirts um, are representing all of Taylor's beards. Okay so about four months before uh, Taylor and Calvin were seen together uh, there's a video where Calvin says that Taylor isn't his type and then Calvin also said that he doesn't like dating famous women. He's also very unpopular within the fandom. I don't like that word, but that's what it is. He's, a, like, just a bit of a dickhead, basically. It was really thought they met at the Brit Awards, but apparently he's at the Style Awards. So there's a video, uh, and you can see Calvin Taylor and Tree, Taylor's publicist, talking. The thing is, Calvin was seen at the beach between the 17th and 23rd of February, uh, the Brit Awards took place on the 24th and 25th of February 2015. Um, so, uh, with his ex-girlfriend. So, with Taylor's one-year anniversary post she did, um, that confirmed that they got together on the 6th of March 2015, they're basically making it sort of seem like Taylor maybe cheated or they just got together very quickly. So, the timeline, once again, is a bit... So media, the media had picked up on that and they were saying that he cheated with Taylor. Uh, he deleted all his Instagram pictures with her, uh, trying to cover it up. Um, and even when he was with Taylor, he was still liking his ex's pictures. So for Calvin and Taylor's pap shots, uh, they went for a PR company called uh, AKM GSI. Uh, she used them for Jake Gyllenhaal as well. Uh, and if you look at their tagline, it says uh, PR for hire. So a lot of the time, celebrities uh call paps or they're tipped off so like it's never 
like it hardly ever in an organic shop so like pretty much any picture you see they want you to see it in april um 2015 she attended the heim concert with calvin in la people found odd that taylor wasn't singing or dancing she was just sitting there and um, that's unusual for taylor she she's very um outgoing at events like that uh she brought jamie king and her husband along at the beginning of the stunt and until the end of the summer they were almost seen like never alone together so there were um pictures of calvin leaving taylor's how uh taylor's la home uh in the morning but how would they know he was leaving like they were called like taylor has security and she lives it's she's taylor like Perhaps won't do that. There's also shots of them in cars where Taylor looks happy. Um, there was an there was an occasion where Taylor uh, and Calvin got papped at dinner in LA, in LA, but um, the pictures were taken the night of the 11th of May, but weren't posted until the 12th of May. The pictures were a People's Magazine exclusive, which the Billboard Music Awards. So there was a lot of PDA and lack of chemistry as Calvin did not want to be there. There were lots of articles, um, saying like how awkward they look together and things like that. On the 26th of May, 27th, 27th and 28th, Calvin spent three days uh, in New York with Taylor after she got back from a show in Norwich uh, in England. They went to a pizza place that was very touristy. And the next two days after that, they were papped every single day, all times of the day, uh, after she had first called them to come to her place. Um, they were seen so many times, uh, the paparazzi ended up camping outside her house. But people that like live in New York said that like there's like never paparazzi outside her house, so it's a bit like... And so these pictures taken um, uh, while they were leaving he stopped and waited for her he held her hands for maybe two seconds to get shot and then apparently he pushed her in the car there's a video but the link is dead so I have seen it though but I can't find it so I'm sorry basically Calvin was just starting to be very like he wasn't trying um, and there was a lot of tension between the two uh, Tree uh, got Pat leaving Taylor's New York apartment with a suitcase the day after Calvin supposedly spent the night on the 14th of June, Taylor threw Jamie uh, King a baby shower. Um, and then the next day, on the 15th, Calvin and Taylor and Tree were papped outside of his car and they were meeting Gigi, Joe and some other friends for lunch in LA. However, they were taken the day before because Taylor was wearing the same outfit as the 14th. Uh, they were exclusive to People and Pop Sugar. Um, they were posted at 9am LA time, and that's not much time. Uh, Soho House... Soho House, where they went, um, is like a place, like an exclusive place. So like, it prides itself. Like you can't, perhaps don't, can't get in. There's like underground garage and stuff. So many more instances where they're getting pats where it just wouldn't usually happen. So like, calls being made basically. Uh, on the nineteenth of August, <clears throat> uh, me the media began posting things about Calvin, Ca Calvin. Calvin, like, being a dickhead, um, multiple articles written, uh, and then they were not seen together until the 1st of October, my birthday again, uh, coincidence, more things happening on my birthday. Uh, the massage parlour pictures, I remember this happening. Um, on the 8th of September, Calvin was seen at a time massage parlour where people go to get their happy ending, so, like, I don't want to have to explain that to you. <laughs> um... So it ended up, um, so it was believed that this was because Calvin wanted to get out of the stunt. Um, the media started reporting uh, on October 12th that he had cheated. Taylor hopped on Tumblr to defend him and Calvin posted on Twitter about he would sue for defamation of character. But it didn't end, end there because it basically, Taylor's relationships were only lasting about six months and people started to notice. So this one was supposed to be the one where it's like, oh. It can last, I can, you know, yeah. So it wanted to be longer than a year. Um, so, oh my God. Uh, they went to Miami on the 30th of October and he looked really angry the whole time. Um, and he ended up leaving early to catch a flight.
back to LA 45 minutes before her. On November 15th, Taylor, Calvin and his friends met at Soho House again. Um, and it was reported by tweets that Taylor left uh, before him. Taylor got back from Australia on the day of her birthday. Um, she had just announced a deal that she'd uh, signed with Apple for her tour video. Um, so instead of celebrating her birthday, her and Calvin uh, and her parents went to Jimmy L L Levine's granddaughter's birthday party. Um, and out of all the celebrities there, they were the only ones that were papped. They supposedly spent Christmas together in Colorado. Um, except Taylor arrived in Colorado on the on the 19th and Calvin showed up on the 22nd and left 10 hours later after they got the pitch after they got pictures together. They were meant to be there the entire time he he was posting pictures uh from Scotland over Christmas. Uh Taylor had then released the Out the Woods music video on the night of New Year's Eve. Uh she had always used Calvin's name uh in the headlines before she was releasing something new. Uh, they supposedly spent Valentine's Day together, but it was only just um, Calvin posted a, like a story of uh, Olivia. Um, Calvin was in the studio during the Grammys. Uh, Grammys are very important to Taylor, but there's like a theme where uh, Taylor's beards don't go to like the important events. Uh, Calvin continued to be a dickhead. Then the anniversary thing came with the locket and they made a cake. And it's all just very performative. And then the Bahamas thing as well, uh, where they went and wrote their names in the sand. It was all just very performative and childish. And then the iHeartRadio Awards, Taylor, like, thanked Calvin in her speech. He looked bored the whole and time. It was just, like, very... He He's not trying anymore. Coachella happened, which was basically just promo for Calvin. Uh because uh, he was releasing This Is What You Came For, which obviously Taylor ended up, ended up admitting to writing. Uh, she promoted him a lot with a jacket and everything, posting lyrics. So overall, it just served as Taylor trying to prove that she could stay in a relationship for longer than, like, six months. Um, and Calvin was getting promo for his music. Uh, and it kept the rumours uh, of Taylor and stuff away from Taylor, so. And on Carly's birthday, Taylor posted this picture. Like, we get it, you have a boyfriend. So, with Josh and Carly, uh, Josh has had gay rumours for years. Carly has had girlfriends. Um, when in interviews, Carly has, like, forgotten about him. They were, like, rarely seen together. And they were supposed to be together for, like, what, like, five years? I don't even know. Like, for a long time, there were, like, no pictures of them kissing or anything and then when people start to notice that then it started to happen like it's only happened recently uh josh's family are very corrupt with kushner's that like american politics shit i don't really know carly was like the girlfriend to like keep his good image basically uh the information about the wedding being fake is well it's apart from their whole relationship obviously being quite fake um a lot of it comes from People say they have sources, so you've got to take it with a grain of salt, you know. Um, you know, you just got to wait and see with this. Um, I believe it, but obviously I believe in this whole thing, so I'm going to. But obviously I don't expect people to just be like, yeah. Like, it's very confusing if, like, I don't know. if You know, I, I understand. Um, and I also want to say, Taylor could obviously, she doesn't, have to be a lesbian i know this whole thing is like taylor swift is a lesbian but that's just mine and some people's opinions she could be bisexual pansexual whatever you know she she could be straight <laughs> um but yeah i just want to say that like, i don't want to be disrespectful to like other sexualities or whatever okay so for some theories now some of these are a bit like hmm like are you looking too much into things? But then again, you can think you're looking too much into things, and then Taylor comes out. Uh, I wish uh, Taylor like proves that it was like an actual thing. So she's so like intelligent and does all this stuff. Like literally, the randomest thing is literally like correct. So a lot of this I am sort of on the fence about, but like they're popular, so. I'm saying it. So I mentioned the picture um, 
from the magazine and on the disc of Reputation where uh, Taylor's right eye looks like Carly's eye. Um, this is from uh, 9w1ft on Tumblr who has loads of great theories all the time, always always theorising. So if you have Tumblr or don't, I would rec would I don't know, just check 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 out their blog. It's I go on there a lot. So on page seventy two of the second uh volume two of the Reputation magazines that ca uh, came out with the thing, uh came out with the album, there's this picture. Um but that picture is also cut up on the disc of Reputation. Um so I don't know how this they did this, uh, but they took the photo part, and if you look at it, it looks like Carly's eye. Um, so here's all this analysis and stuff they've done and people have done. And at first I was like, no, you're just telling me this, so I'm seeing it. Do you know what I mean? Um, but then if you look at the album, there's like, all eyes on you, all eyes on us, and like cut me into pieces and stuff. Like there was loads of like references to it, and I was a bit like, wait, wait. <laughs> like I know it sounds like a bit mad. That's why I didn't want to talk about it last time. Oh, it's oh. there's so much. Oh, and then the eye on the snake and the me video is bl blind in one eye, and I was just like, oh. but there's so much, and I'm just like, wait. Okay, I'm getting too excited here. The whole theme for like Reputation was snakes, and now for the new album, it's there's a lot of like butterfly imagery. So obviously with the um, mural, and in the me video, and even before that. So on the Reputation tour, during dress, Taylor, the dancing in the background is very sort of butterfly like and reminiscent of a uh, Loie Fuller. I think that's how you say it. And she was a lesbian, and she was a dancer, and Taylor even, um, like, thanks her, uh, speaks about her on tour, uh, saying, uh, talking about, uh, the work she did, uh, for copywriting her work, her own work. Her main, her first major choreographic hit was the Serpentine Dance, Snake. She went on to do the Papillion Dance, which means butterfly. Um, in French. Uh, Taylor said that uh, French is a big clue for the upcoming album and stuff, so uh, this is also uh, this post in particular is by uh, 9w1ft. So Taylor is obviously very inspired by this woman, um, so that this is a very popular theory at the moment, like about what the album's going to be about and stuff, and obviously as a hint to Taylor's sexuality. Um, so we'll keep you updated. So those are the main things I wanted to talk about. Um, there's obviously so much. Um, Ellen, there wasn't that much. There was a few things that could be looked into, uh, but not really much worth saying. Um, a few things, so, you know how, uh, in the look, uh, What You Made Me Do video, Taylor obviously has her past Taylor's, and then she wears the Junior Jules, uh, t-shirt again, Carly's name isn't on it, and, but loads of her best friend's names are, uh, the sort of believe theory thing is that, obviously, Taylor says she doesn't want Carly like a best friend in dress, so, that's a hint, and Taylor's been wearing a lot of rainbow and um, other sexuality themed clothes, uh, pride clothes we'll say, uh, obviously on tour, Taylor wore the rainbow dresses, the bi flag dress. Taylor has obviously spoken up uh, more politically recently which is fantastic, um, uh, but in particularly about like LGBT rights and stuff which you know, very passionate about for someone who, you know, obviously you can be an ally, but um, I think the way she speaks about it, it seems very personal. And she's been donating to things for years um, and um, doing things for LGBT fans, uh, like 
for for their weddings and you know just things like that and then recently obviously she donated the uh, 113 grand to uh i can't remember what organization it was um but i personally feel like the 13 uh on the end of that sort of made it personal because obviously 13 is taylor's number so i think that was her saying this is personal to me obviously i could be talking shit um but I'm really proud of her for speaking up more politi uh, about politics recently. I think that um, her she has a lot of influence and I think that it's good of her to do that. And I'm glad that she finally has. Um, and I think this is a step for her in the direction of potentially coming out. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But things are looking good. So, we'll see. I don't know, you know, when or if there'll be another video. I'm sure there will, because things are happening very quickly. So, there'll be new singles, new things to talk about. Um, but for now, this is it. I want to thank you all for watching my previous videos. I didn't think they'd get that many views. And I suppose, in the grand scheme of things, they might not be that many to some people. But to me, I, who was just making a video for her sister to watch... Thank you, everyone, and thank you for watching this one. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just remembered. Uh, there's, like, a PowerPoint thing, and it basically just basically explains uh, how reputation is not about Joe. So I'm going to link that, and you can read that. Um, and I'll just put other things. So if you just want to read about things, I'll put it in the description. So, yeah. Also, thank you for coming through my hair drying journey with me. <laughs>